The African National Congress, the ANC, which has been in power in South Africa for 30 years, has garnered just over 40.18 of the votes in this year's uh, elections, uh, falling significantly short of a majority. Now, for the first time since 1994, the party will need to make a deal with other political parties to form a coalition government, leaving everyone with the question of uh, what will happen next. Hi, to Melang. Very good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Joining us via Zoom is political analyst uh, Omri Mokwale, uh, just to help us make sense of, um, uh, you know, this new dawn in South African politics that's in a form of coalition government. He's joining me via Zoom uh, this evening. Uh, Mr. Mokwale, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Yes, thank you very much, Tabo, for the, the opportunity. And uh, uh, we are available. We, we hope we can contribute. Much appreciated. I mean, before we, you know, get into the integrities of uh, what transpired during the 2024 elections, maybe let me first get your reaction on uh, the results. Was it expected, uh, you know, to uh, the outcome in general of uh, how political parties have performed in this year's elections? Yes, I, I think on my on our side, it, it was expected. It was expected that the ANC will perform poorly, especially in KZN and Kauti. And uh, but the main issue is because of ANC uh, internal corruption. It's because ANC, you know, has got has been you know faced with corruption and uh, the failure to actually uh, address the concerns addressed in the state capture inquiry report of Justice Zondo, you know. Those uh, recommendations there inside Zondo's report were not addressed and were not attended to. So basically, we expected to perform poorly. We did expect that. Mm. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, as you're saying that it was expected. I mean, uh, most of the polls uh, that uh, we've had uh, leading up to the elections uh, were predicting that the ANC would go somewhere around uh, 41, uh, I mean, 43, 45 percent. But uh, it, it actually was even, uh, you know, worse than that. I mean, they are at 40.18 percent. Uh, does this look like it was an electoral punishment to the ANC, electorate's punishment, rather? Yeah, yes, it's a, it was a serious punishment. But I think what actually took us by surprise, that caused the upset moons, is the MK political party by our former president, Jacob Zuma. That is the one that uh, removed us from maybe 45, 46 to 40%, uh, you know? The, 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 the impact of MK political party by presi former president Zuma. That is what actually uh, affected the ANC tremendously, I would say. Mm. I mean, uh, as you're saying, uh, you know, speaking about MK political party, most of uh, your colleagues, uh, you know, uh, they, actually got it wrong that the MK was uh, maybe going to garner two seats or three seats in parliament. But I mean, for the first time, and a, a party that is uh, less than six months old, garnering just almost 15% of the vote, obviously somewhere, somehow, you know, they actually ate a pie of uh, almost all the different uh, parties that were there at the top. I think I think we missed we missed uh, the impact of MK political party. Mm. We did not really uh, imagine that a party with six months old can uh, have such impact. Of course, it's similar to Coke. Coke did have a similar impact at that time when it was formed, but MK political party I think uh, went further. So it, it was unexpected for most of us, and it was unexpected for ANC also. So. It took us by a storm, you know, and that is what actually affected the ANC more than any other party at the moment. Mm. What What do you make of the voter turnout, uh, uh, Mr. Mahwale? I mean, looking at uh, how people did not actually uh, go to the polls. I mean, you know, the IEC was actually, uh, actually missed the mark, saying that uh, uh, they're expecting that uh, the voter turnout will be a bit higher in these elections, but we saw just uh, around 58.6% uh, you know, of the people coming in there. 27, over 27 million people had registered to vote, but uh, we did not even, you know, scratch the surface. Yes, I think 
I think most uh, of uh, most of our people uh, get disillusioned and uh, get very angry, and then from there, instead of going to vote for different parties, uh, especially mostly uh, former ANC supporters, they just stay at home. You know, that's the, that's the big problem of having as ANC members that most of our supporters just stay at home rather than to go and vote for different parties. So that is a problem that has been there for the past three elections. Most ANC supporters get disillusioned and stay at home and don't go and vote. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that then affected the ANC and punished the ANC. Mm. My guest tonight is the political analyst Omri Mokwale. They are talking more about uh, what transpired in these years' elections. Uh, you know, the emergence of uh, MK Party garnering, uh, you know, just over 50 seats. Uh, a tremendous achievement indeed. For them, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we just get into uh, particularly looking at those seats in the National Assembly. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching So It Today. Much appreciated for joining us. Uh, my name is Tabo Mulukwane. Tonight we discuss the new political regime in South Africa, and that is, of course, that of uh, coalition government. And joining us uh, in this conversation is political analyst Amri Mokwale, uh, just to unpack more on uh, the latest development, particularly looking at how things have been shifting since uh, the 29th. Uh, since the second, actually, when the results uh, were announced by the Electoral Commission of South Africa. Mr. Mahwale, much appreciated for staying on. I mean, I, I want us to get into the seats now at the National Assembly. I'm going to ask my colleagues to flag it on our screen. They're looking at, uh, you know, how, um, you know, these political parties have garnered uh, the uh you know different seats in parliament they look at the anc has uh, somewhere somehow lost um, a few seats we know that uh, just over 70 of uh, uh members of the national assembly there they've lost their seats in the anc there and uh, uh you know you look at mk the emergence of mk coming up uh you know with uh, just over um 87 seats in parliament um in total from regional and national and you look at 159 of the ANC there. Um, the EFF has been pushed to fourth place uh, with 39 seats, 17 in national and 22 uh, in uh, the regional seats there in parliament. Uh, this is somewhat, uh, you know, a, a development that was not expected. And how will that impact, you know, how National Assembly will function in these uh, seventh administration? Yes, I think it was not expected, uh, but that, that is the reality of this year elections. And uh, we have to accept that the voters decided this way. And uh, it is up to, well, the ANC to see to it that it works under these conditions because uh, you don't choose, you know, the voters have decided. And so what all we can do, we can make the best out of the situation. So ANC will have to look at the uh, opportunities for coalitions, of course, with various parties, you know, uh, around, because to reach that 51% uh, of uh, the votes, so 201 or, I mean, 201 seats in, uh, in yeah. Parliament, you know, vote for voting purposes. So um, let's talk about uh, these coalition uh, talks that have been happening. We know that, uh, uh, you know, I was just listening to um, the BBC there um, with uh, John Stianazen of the, um, the, the the Democratic Alliance there, just not hinting if they won't be able to work uh, with the ANC, but saying that, uh, you know, the country can't afford uh, MK and EFF party uh, at the helm there. You know, um, let's talk about that. How likely um, are we to see uh, a, a coalition between the ANC, the DA and the IFP? or the ANC, the MK, the EFF, or the ANC and the EFF and the IFP, how likely will this, uh, you, you know, in terms of direction, will it go? Is it really uh, possible that the ANC would, um, you, know, um, you know, just form a coalition government with the Democratic Alliance, looking at the Democratic Alliance being uh, on the West, far West? Look, I think I think as to which uh, uh, parties will form coalition with the ANC is still the matter that is being discussed. 
you know, each of these parties have got their own advantages and disadvantages for coalitions, you know. Uh, uh, the DA, you know, uh, does have differences with ANC that are also uh, critical. And so if it has to go into coalition with the ANC, the ANC will have to. Uh, there, there must be compromises on both ways, I guess. And also with the EFF and MK political party, there, there are serious problems there. I think with MK, uh, MK political party, it's more like that uh, faction that was in the ANC called RET, you know? So mm -hmm. RET faction and Tulam Tumamina faction in the ANC, they were fighting each other. Now RET faction is out, is coming this way. So the, 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 the coalition between ANC and MK political party will be the most difficult to achieve because I think uh, it will require maybe President Ramaphosa to resign because former President Zuma does, yeah. does not want to work with, uh, former, uh, with President Ramaphosa as far as we are aware. And uh, also Julius Malem of EFF does not really want to work with President Ramaphosa as far as we are aware. So uh, uh, that is going to be a difficult one. But we'll see what happens. The, 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 the teams that are negotiating will find compromises where they can find them. But at the moment, uh, we don't really know which way it's going to go. Mm. So, um, I, I mean, I mean, Mr. Mokwale, what do you think of a minority government then? Uh, how, you know, does it come into play in this regard? I mean, this option would see parties electing a president without an agreement. I mean, uh, each party will field its own candidate and uh, uh, the candidates there, uh, you know, uh, well, with more votes, will form a government, and uh, you know the opponents will have an option uh, to point out if uh, it will be difficult to pass laws in in, in parliament. How, you know, how do we see this playing out? Uh, particularly since we have less than fourteen days, because after fourteen days, then you know uh, it gets complicated. Yes, I think what's going, what's happening is that the, the teams are negotiating. Uh, uh, across party lines. So ANC uh, team is negotiating with the uh, uh, DA, is negotiating with EFF, is negotiating with the Nkata Freedom Party, is negotiating with the uh, Patriotic Front, negotiating with Freedom Fund Plus. All these parties are, are in process of negotiations for a possible uh, coalition government because it can only be a coalition government because there's no party that has won elections outright at the moment. So the ANC team will have to decide which of these parties they, they go in bed with, you know, to form that coalition, uh, you know, uh, block to make 201, uh, you know, seats in parliament for passing motions and for, for passing the budget and all those things. So the ANC team has to decide on that. But uh, opportunities are there. Opportunities are there, uh, you know, to, to work with these parties, IFP, uh, to work with PA, to work with uh, even uh, with EFF, if EFF we can work with it. Although the the chances of uh, smooth working with EFF are, are very those uh, we cannot rely on that because Malema is not uh, in good terms with Ramaphosa, and so likelihood of EFF working with ANC at the moment it's uh, neither here nor there. So uh, and so, uh, but we we don't know uh, ultimately what the teams will decide, but they have to make compromises uh, and uh, it's possible to have this minority uh, government. It's possible mm -hmm. to have it. Uh, Mr. Mahole, we're going to take a quick ad break. When you come back, I want us to wrap up the conversation looking at uh, the way forward there, uh, particularly as, uh, you know, uh, the clock is ticking for all these political parties to, you know, come up with some sort of an agreement so that they can be able to form uh, uh, that government that each and every South African is anticipating there. Let's take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching So to Today. Much appreciated for joining us. We are almost at the end of the show and have been in conversation about this historical turning point in South African politics as we are discussing national coalition government with political analyst Tom Mukwale is joining us via Zoom. Uh, Mr. Mukwale, as we wrap up the conversation there, I mean, I just saw, you know, uh, uh, one of the articles earlier on uh, saying that um, uh, 
uh, the MK party leader, uh, Jacob Zuma, uh, saying that uh, the party could reject the 59 parliamentary seats, I mean, 58 parliamentary seats as a form of a protest against the results. I mean, in the midst of these negotiations, we know that there are political parties that are calling for a rerun of the elections. They are calling for a recount of the election of, of, of some of the uh, votes that were casted there. Um, um, how, how, do you think that it is, uh, you know, um, uh, I mean, this will will somehow, somehow impact on uh, the decisions that we are expecting, especially with the, the MK party saying that somehow, somehow it will reject the parliamentary seats there? Yeah, I think I think the key issue would be what does uh, what, what what the electoral court, the electoral court must decide on the matter, uh, you know, if uh, if. If uh, MK political party has launched a protest or against the, the counting or the result or so on, then the electoral court must decide on the matter and, and give a decision. But at the moment, we, we, we were still working on the basis that they've got those 58 uh, seats and uh, until the electoral court decide otherwise. But if the electoral court decides that uh, uh, the election should be rerun, it's, it's up to them. We, we don't really have control over that. But uh, I think it will be very costly, but we, we don't know what will happen. But it is up to the electoral court to decide. If the electoral court feels that uh, the results should stand as they are, then uh, uh, MK political party must accept them, uh, you know, mm. because if the court says that, then they must accept them. But if the court says they've got a case to, you know, uh, they've got a, a good reason to complain about, then they have to decide what is the way forward. Are we going to have rerun of elections or what? Or are we going to have recounting of uh, of the votes? You know, they have to decide on that. Mm. I mean, previously, we, we, you know, after 1994, we did have the government of national unity. There. It won't be the first time if, uh, you know, South Africa goes into that route. But uh, is South Africa ready, I mean, to go back to that route and also or will these decisions also affect what's going to be happening in provinces? I mean, you look at the Hang provinces, such as Gauteng, uh, you know, the in Northern Cape, you look at uh, provinces such as KwaZulu-Natal, whereby the MK is leading there. But uh, somehow, somehow, some of the decisions that might be taken on a national level, um, you know, might actually uh, culminate in what we will be seeing in uh, the uh, provinces. Yeah, I think I think the national level will be different from uh, the provincial uh, situation in my understanding. Because in in, in KZN, for instance, where MK political party is the the biggest party now after these elections, they will have to decide uh, how they form the provincial government, who should be their partners. It's up to them in that province. Uh, but nationally, you know, we're looking at this uh, for, for 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 the 400 national assembly members. Uh, this uh, is a different issue than the provincial one. In the provinces, maybe uh, Kaiserkane and Gauteng, uh, they will need to juggle around for the for 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 for, for, for coalition governments. But the leaders in those uh, respective uh, provinces will decide. MK political party in Kaiserkane, in in Gauteng, I think it's still the ANC that is the highest party. They will decide who they have as partners in their coalition. So uh, these are the two provinces that I think uh, maybe need more uh, caution, but I don't think they are connected to the national myself. Uh, the national will be handled differently in my mind. Mm. Um, as we wrap up the conversation, Mr. Mohale, what happens now? I mean, we are approaching that 14-day uh, mark. Um, what happens? Are we likely to see decisions coming up uh, uh, in the next uh, few days? I mean, we know that the ANC's NEC is meeting uh, on Thursday this week, uh, you know, maybe to iron out uh, some of those various issues uh, and also look at, uh, you know, what would be their options there. Um, are we likely to see decisions uh, maybe before the end of this week? Yeah, I think maybe the end of the week is too near, but I think the middle of next week, I think I would say the middle of next week, because I think now when the NEC is going to meet, when the NEC meets, they have to go through uh, you know, scrutinize and uh, make squad analysis, you know, of each coalition partner, possible coalition partner. What are the pros and cons? 
if they are in coalition with DA, what are the pros and cons if they are in coalition with MK political party? What are the pros and cons if they are in, you know, in coalition with EFF? What are the pros and cons if they are in coalition with PA, IFP, you know, Freedom Fund? But they have to uh, scrutinize each of those uh, possibilities and see which one is preferable for them as the NEC. And on the basis of that, then they will, you know, formulate the policy forward as to who, which parties they are going to bring on board. But it will require compromises on either side. So the ANC must have its own uh, firm points that it thinks that are critical for any coalition uh, partner. And they must also allow the coalition partner to, to come with its own uh, you know, uh, request or demands to the party. So it's not, uh, it's not one way win, you know, it's meeting each other halfway. So, mm. but I think the, the NEC meeting will be the one that decides which are the parties to consider for coalition after thorough scrutiny of all the options. That's, that's my view. Mr. Mokhole, before I let you go, I mean, I, I, I have to sneak this one in. I mean, we haven't seen the emergence of, um, uh, you know, independent candidates in these elections. Uh, what seems to have gone wrong? You know, uh, you look at how uh, Bosa changed the format of uh, the independency when uh, Musi Maimani was running there. But the rest of the independent candidates are nowhere to be found and no one is... I think the question of uh, the independent in this particular uh, election is that uh, the, the the voters were not yet, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, did not have voter education properly yeah. to actually know about this independent candidate, and the ballot, you know, did not really show very clearly the independent candidate. So, in the ballot, for instance. Uh, you know, the ballot that I, 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 I voted on, I didn't see any independent candidates myself, you know. But uh, I think it's, uh, it's voter education and, uh, and the, the new ballot uh, that uh, maybe most people didn't know, uh, I did not understand the, 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 the ballot properly, especially num ballot number two. They did not understand it properly. So mm -hmm. we need voter education, and that should be the homework of the EIC, Independent Electoral Commission. Mr. Mohale, much appreciated. Unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but much appreciated for taking the time and joining us on this show. Thank you very much for the opportunity. There was a political analyst, Omri Mohale, talking to us about this new formation of the South African government as we wait, uh, you know, with political parties, uh, you know, in talks in closed, uh, you know, meetings with uh, the various political parties to come up with um, some sort of an agreement so that they can be able to form a government. Remember, they have 14 days. Uh, just after the declaration of the results, they only have 14 days to uh, form a government. Uh, the time is ticking. We've got uh, less than eight days uh, from now on so that we can be able to see uh, which uh, party will emerge. And uh, I mean, we know for a fact that uh, no one has uh, received an outright majority at this point with the ANC falling below 50 there. Uh, as uh, political analyst Omri Mohale saying that, look, uh, there has to be some sort of a compromise somewhere, somehow, between the political parties. Find a centre so that uh, they can take the interests of South Africans forward. On that note, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode, send us an email. It's Soweto today at SowetoTV.co.za or you can call or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself, Tabo Mulukwane, and the rest of the team, it's good night from us and thank you for watching.